Productive Life was introduced in 1994 and was one of the first health traits to be evaluated. Productive Life, or PL, is a measure of the number of months a dairy cow produced milk over her lifetime. For example, if you use a bull at 7 Productive Life, the average daughters of this bull will have 7 more productive months than the average daughters in your herd. In reality, genetic selection for Productive Life doesn't just mean more old cows. It predicts which cows are toughest, healthiest, and easiest to manage. We call those the four event cows. If you look at a cow card on your herd management software program, a four event cow has only four events listed throughout her lactation. Fresh, bred, confirmed pregnant, and dry. 8% of the variation observed in productive life is due to genetic factors as opposed to environmental. Also, there is an indirect benefit of selecting for productive life, as it has a moderate genetic correlation with many health traits. So, if you're looking for more four event type cows in your herd, then consider using productive life in your genetic plan. For any progressive dairy, it's economically important that cows remain productive and alive while minimizing losses due to death. In 2016, PTA livability was introduced to help producers track cows that leave the herd due to death. Livability simply tells you whether cows leave the herd alive or dead. It does not necessarily tell you the length of time spent in the herd. Livability is expressed as the percentage of cows that stay alive before exiting your herd. If using a bull at plus one livability, we can expect 1% more daughters to remain in the herd as opposed to leaving for death. For instance, let's say that 90% of the cows in your herd remain alive when exiting. If you use two bulls, bull A at minus one livability and bull B at plus one livability, you can expect daughters of bull B to have a 2% greater chance of remaining alive when leaving the herd versus bull A. Now, Let's assume that you are a 1,000 cow dairy and you've decided to use bull B in your herd. Bull B will generate 2% or 20 more cows that will leave the herd alive and generate revenue versus bull A. If cow cow prices are $1,000, that is an extra $20,000 in your pocketbook. We have to remember that the heritability for livability is 1%. So environmental or management factors will explain the majority of variation that we see within this trait. Even though from a genetic standpoint the heritability is small, there are huge economic consequences for cows that leave the herd due to death reasons. Milk quality premiums are a valuable source of revenue for dairies Incorporating somatic cell score in your genetic plan will help improve milk quality while reducing treatment costs and lost milk due to mastitis. Somatic cell score is directly related to somatic cell count, a milk quality measure familiar to most dairies. Just like SCC, a lower SCS value is more desirable. SCS is the average SCC across the first 305 days of lactation. Let's consider this graph with PTAs for SCS plotted on the y-axis and SCC on the x-axis. Ultimately, the graph shows the average SCC through the first 305 days of lactation for each one-tenth increase in SCS. If you look closer at the table, you'll see that each tenth of a point change in SCS does not equate to the same amount of change in SCC. The important takeaway is that a one-tenth drop in SCS is equivalent to an expected 5 to 8,000 reduction in your herd somatic cell count. Let's consider using these two bulls in your herd. Bull A at 2.9 SCS and Bull B at 3 SCS. You can expect a 7,000 SCC difference between the daughters of Bull A and Bull B throughout the first 305 days of their lactations. At 12% heritability, somatic cell score is one of the most highly heritable health traits. This means that genetic selection for somatic cell score can help improve milk quality for future generations.
The disease traits are shown as disease resistance. A higher value is better, meaning an animal is more resistant to the disease. A lower negative value means an animal is more susceptible or less resistant to the disease. A plus one means 1% 1 more resistance than the herd average. Let's take a herd with an average mastitis incidence of 10%. We have 100 daughters from a bull with a PTA of plus two for mastitis. We will expect eight of those 100 daughters to have mastitis, which is an incidence rate of 8%. While well, this example demonstrated how this works for mastitis, the same principle works for the other health traits. Milk fever, displaced abomasum, ketosis, metritis, and retained placenta. The heritability of these traits is still relatively low, but that doesn't mean you cannot make progress by selecting for them. Additionally, since they are correlated with other health traits, we have already indirectly been making progress for the disease traits. One of the biggest challenges on dairies is getting cows pregnant. Environment plays the greatest role in fertility performance, but genetics can have a dramatic impact as well. Daughter pregnancy rate, or DPR, is a trait that measures female fertility. It's defined as the percentage of eligible, non-pregnant cows that become pregnant in a 21-day period. It's based on actual pregnancy check results between 50 and 250 days in milk. In this evaluation, cows not confirmed pregnant by 250 days are assumed to be open. For example, if we use a bull at 2 for DPR, we'd expect his daughters to be 2% higher on pregnancy rate than their average herd mates. For a herd at 20% pregnancy rate, this means daughters of that bull will average 22%. In contrast, daughters in that same herd sired by a bull at minus 2 for DPR would average 18% pregnancy rate, two points less than their herd mates. Let's modestly assume increasing pregnancy rate by 1% is worth $20 per cow per year. That means a 1,000 cow dairy that goes from 20 to 22% pregnancy rate would increase their bottom line by $40,000 per year. Selection for DPR will help you create a more fertile next generation and will have a tremendous impact on your dairy's profitability. Conception rate tells the percentage of inseminated females that become pregnant at each service. Genetics play an important part in an animal's ability to conceive. Cow conception rate and heifer conception rate tell the impact a sire has on progeny conception rates. The same bull may sire animals with better fertility as cows than heifers, and vice versa. Therefore, a sire likely has different values for CCR than HCR. For example, Let's say your milking herd has an average conception rate of 35. If you use a bull at 2 CCR, you can expect the daughters of that bull to average a 37% conception rate. If your heifers have an average conception rate of 60% and you use that same bull with a 3 HCR, you can expect the daughters of that bull to have a 63% conception rate. Sire Calving Ease evaluates the percent of difficult calvings 
due to the sire of the calf being born. An eight is considered average. Let's compare an example with two bulls. We have bull A with a plus eight sire calving yeast and bull B with a plus four sire calving yeast. Let's head to the barn where we have 200 non-lactating heifers. All 200 of these heifers are sired by the same bull and they are breeding age heifers, so we synchronize them to come into heat today to be bred. On the left side of the barn, we have half of those heifers, so 100 of them, that get bred to bull A, who is our plus eight sire calving yeast bull. On the right half of the barn, we have the other 100 heifers who get bred to bull B, and he was our plus four sire calving yeast bull. Therefore, we can expect that 8% of the heifers that are bred to bull A on that left side of the barn would have a difficult calving. 4% of the heifers bred to bull B on that right side of the barn would have a difficult calving. Oftentimes, to be considered a calving yeast bull, a sire must be an eight or less on this trait to receive that designation. Sire calving ease is recorded on farm on a scale of one to five, where one is no problem or unobserved, and a five is extreme difficulty. Calving ease measures a percent DBH, or difficult birth in heifers. The percent DBH then considers those calvings that are coded a four or a five on farm to be difficult births according to calving ease. Daughter calving ease gives the percent of expected difficult calvings due to the sire of the heifer giving birth to the calf. An eight daughter calving ease is considered average. Similar to sire calving ease, daughter calving ease is expressed as a percent DBH, or difficult birth in heifers. At calving, a maternity pen technician will code the birth difficulty on a one to five scale in the herd management software where a 1 means no problem or unobserved, and a 5 means extreme difficulty. The percent coded as 4s and 5s contribute to the percent DBH, which ultimately gives us calving ease information. Let's consider an example with two bulls. We have bull A, who is plus 10 daughter calving ease, and bull B, who is plus 5 daughter calving ease. Now we go out to our barn where we have 200 total heifers. All 200 of these are bred to the same bull. The difference between these two groups of animals is who their sires are. On the left, we have 100 animals sired by bull A, who was plus 10 daughter calving ease. On the right side, we have 100 animals sired by bull B, who was plus five daughter calving ease. We know then that 10% of the heifers sired by bull A would have difficult calvings because of who their sires are. And 5% of the heifers sired by bull B would have difficult calvings because of their sires. So 10 out of 100 difficult calvings born to bull A compared to the 5 out of 100 born to bull B, which we see once their daughters ultimately give birth. A stillbirth is defined as a calf that is born dead or one that dies within 48 hours of birth. Sire stillbirth accounts for the percent of those stillbirths due to the sire of the calf being born. And 8% is considered average. While the calving yeast traits capture information on the first calving event in a heifer's lifetime, the sire stillbirth traits capture data from breedings to animals of all ages. Let's do another example with two bulls. Bull A is plus nine for sire stillbirth, and bull B is plus six for sire stillbirth. We can say that the animals bred to bull A will have 9% dead calves, and animals bred to bull B will have 6% dead calves, assuming the sires of these animals giving birth are all the same. If we bred 100 animals to bull A, 9 out of 100 would have dead calves because of the genetic impact of the calf's sire. If we bred 100 animals to bull B, 6 out of 100 would be born dead because of the genetic impact of their calf's sire. So we have three more live calves from bull B than bull A, simply based on who the sire is of those calves. Therefore, a dairy can capture a tangible, 
economically impactful value from sire stillbirth selection. A stillbirth is defined as a calf that is born dead or one that dies within 48 hours of birth. Daughter stillbirth accounts for the percent of those stillbirths due to the dam of the calf being born, and 8% is considered average. Let's look again at an example with two bulls. One is 11 for daughter stillbirth, and the other is 7. We can say the animal sired by bull A will have 11% dead calves, and the animal sired by bull B will have 7% dead calves, assuming they are bred to the same sire. If we have 100 animals sired by bull A, 11 out of 100 will have dead calves because of the genetic impact of the sire of the animal giving birth. If we have 100 animals sired by bull B, 7 out of 100 would be born dead because of who their dam's sire is. So we will have four more live calves from bull B than bull A simply based on who the sire is of the animal giving birth. When selecting for sire stillbirth or daughter stillbirth, it is important to remember that you see the impact for sire stillbirth just in one generation. If you use lower sire stillbirth, that will create fewer dead calves for that specific mating. In contrast, if you select for daughter stillbirth, you can breed that trait into the maternal line in your herd to make progress generation over generation to ultimately create a group of females more consistently giving birth to live calves. Therefore, emphasis on this trait is more of a long-term breeding strategy.